we're going to get started. Thank you everyone for being here and uh, thank you everyone for watching it if you're going to watch it later. I'm going to say that uh, this uh, study group that we're doing is um, uh, for our Rafua Shalema, first to our uh, Rav, Rav Yitzchak Feivish Ben Breina Malka, and uh, also to our uh, uh, friend uh, Bluma Bat uh, Ginendel Tova, and uh, finally and dear most uh, dearest uh, the babies. Um, I have two babies right now that are in um, intensive care. Uh, one is uh, still on the ventilator, and Rakim and Elodim Bnei Ayala, who is going to 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 so that's uh, that's what prompted me to make uh, this study group. I hope uh, people will uh, enjoy um, a little bit about uh, um, the group and what we're going to do. So um, if you can see on my screen, um, can, can um, is there anybody that can talk? Eliezer? At least I get some feedback. What? You, we see you. Um, okay, so no, do you see the screen? It's all right. Okay, good. So um, everybody can see on the screen, there's the uh, uh, weekly, um, it comes out weekly, uh, Divrei Torah from uh, Rabbi Ginsburg for um, relating to the Pasha, but also to various other things. Um, for example, in this one, you can find about the Rosh Chodesh Vat. Um, um, and other um, wonders from Torah that Rabbi Ginsburg speaks about. And um, every week we get uh, this little, actually, booklet, newspaper, however you want to look at it. And um, um, I, I want to speak a little bit about, um, I, I picked one uh, main uh, uh, study that I want to review with everybody today, but I urge everybody to uh, read um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of great things in this uh, specific one on Pasha Bo. So we'll uh, skip right to it. We're going to go to the uh, class the Rav gave about Samach um, Zayin. Uh, so Samach Zayin is uh, uh, six, three, seven, eight, one. That's 14 years ago. So here it also says it specifically 14 years ago. Uh, Rabbi Ginsburg gave a class on uh, Yud Shvat. Yud Shvat is uh, the yard side of the, uh, uh, what they call the Friedeke Rebbe, what we call um, uh, the Rebbe Rayatz, um, uh, the previous uh, Chabad Re uh, Rebbe from, uh, he came from Russia to 770, he opened 770, so um, um, this, um, this uh, class that Rabbi Ginsburg gave um, is uh, uh, relating to um, the and uh, things that he uh, that he saw. So um, as we start, um, there is a uh, conversation, a dialogue, uh, maybe an argument um, between the Alter Rebbe, the first Rebbe of Chabad, and the Rebbe Rayatz, and we're talking about uh, the beginning of the Rebbe Rayatz. Uh, um, is uh, uh, time that he became a rabbi, so um, beginning of his nesiut. Uh, the word nesiut in general is to uplift, as we say, nesiador. Nesiador is, um, today is a very interesting day. It's uh, the day that uh, America chose a new president. Um, it's a, So the concept of a, of a president, of a nasi, in, in, in Judaism, in Yiddishkeit, is mainly to lift up from the word uh, um, naso, um, to lift up the generation. So the, the Friedrich Rebbe um, started um, his Nesius, um, he had a vision. And in that vision, um, he saw the, um, the Alter Rebbe, the first Rebbe of Chabad um, that came to him. And they had an argument. The Alter Rebbe said, um, everyone should have the same um, of God and love of God as they had um, uh, been required to have in my generation. So there's 
two things, two wings um, that the Kabbalah speaks about um, as the way for um, for a person uh, to have his his talks, his tefillah, his studies, everything to have it uplifted, to have it connected to Shemaim, to um, to to God, basically, um, is having ahava, love of God, which is a little bit easy to understand the word love in general, um, even though it's a very complex word and um, um, has a lot of meanings to it and deeper meanings and uh, more simple meanings and the world is all around love, but love of God is an easy um, uh, word to explain. The other side of that is awe of God. What is the word yira? So one of the chidushim that I've heard from Rabbi Ginsburg, one of the most, uh, to me, one of the most important chidushim that I've heard is that the word yira is not translated simply as fear, um, as most people would translate fear of God, yira as fear. It's more translated as sensitivity. It's a very important word, and it was actually an English lesson when uh, Rabbi Ginsburg explained it that the word yira is sensitivity. So there's two things that you need to have, two wings to fly, to, to, to take what you have, to take what you're doing, to take what you're davening, what you're, um, any, uh, whether it's praise or studies or, or anything you do in life, in order to connect it to the one above, to, to God's um, uh, mitzvot, to God's uh, um, plan for this world, you need to have um, love of God and awe of God and sensitivity to God. If you're doing something because it's in the books, it's just not going to work. So that's basic Kabbalah to you, that you cannot do something, do a mitzvah. Let's say someone wakes up in the morning and he says, Moriani. He says, I thank you, God, for allowing me to have another day, to have my neshama come back here and fix things and do things for another day. So you can say it because it's written in the textbook. You can say it because you're used to saying it. Or you can say it because you're connected and you love God and you have a lot of sensitivity to what God wants to where you are today. And that's why you're saying it. So there's two ways of waking up in the morning. And I'm starting with waking up in the morning. It can be anything throughout the day, whether you're, um, um, again, starting the day with a prayer or whether it's um, doing business or whether you're, uh, being with family and friends, you can do things because you have a hava and yira, because you have love of God and, and sensitivity to God in everything you do. And therefore, the Kabbalah explains that when you do things that way, it goes up, it, it, it gets uplifted and it's connected to God. Or you can do things just because, because you were taught, because of um, just the regular day to day. So that's in general a hava and yira. Now we're going back to right here where we're talking about the argument. The argument is that the um, the Alter Rebbe, the first Rebbe of Chabad, told the the current Rebbe, the Friedrich Rebbe, the Rebbe Rayat, he told him, listen, everyone has to have the same. Everyone, he um, specifically, the argument was in the Hasidic younger light, the young um, uh, Hasidim. Um, not the older ones that, you know, don't need to care so much about the family and, you know, they have grown kids and, and have uh, a lot of chassidus under them. But, you know, a 20-year-old, 25-year-old person struggling, we're talking about about 120 years ago um, on or about um, um, where things were maybe less, around 100 years ago, things were not good um, in any way um, for a young Hasidic guy in, um, um, well, in Russia in general or around everywhere, even in the United States, um, in America, there was um, a very hard time uh, for any person. It was, it was a tough time. And, um, and the Alter Rebbe says, no, you still need to have the same fear and awe. And the uh, uh, current Rebbe, the Rebbe Rayat, at that time said, no, you cannot expect it. It's just, it cannot be expected. Um, just to simplify, what does that mean? That means that, you know, you can take something as done, meaning we're not saying a, 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 a Hasidic young guy that wakes up in the morning 
doesn't say thank you to Hashem. He doesn't say thank you, God, for waking up. But we're not expecting him to say it in a way that's connected the same way as it was a couple generations ago. It's just not going to happen. Um, so why why is that? So he explains that um, that in this time, um, in these crazy uh, times and, and, and days, um, it's just they don't have um, they don't have food. They're just hungry. And they don't have um, even the simplest bed. They don't have a, what we call like a mattress, a blanket. They don't have a place to sleep. They don't have food for the family. So it's just tough times and you can't expect it. That's the argument. So before we go into who won and, and everything around it, uh, let's just understand something in this argument. And this is where Robin Ginsburg takes us to a uh, side proof but a very important one. The, the proof is that a, a, a real Rebbe, a real leader, um, a Jewish a Rebbe that's connected to Moshe Rabbeinu and connected to a Kaddish Baruch Hu, does not, um, does not stay um, above, but rather is in, in the generation in a way that understands the generation, both um, in the mindset of the generation and the feelings and the way the generation is. Um, so again, why are we explaining this? You could look at the story and say, okay, there was a Rebbe many years ago, the first Rebbe of Chabad, he expects certain things. And then a couple generations later, the situation became a lot worse and now we're expecting less. So that could be the, the end of the story, but we're not saying that. And the proof to that is that there's a known story about the first Rebbe of Chabad, the Alter Rebbe, that his daughter, um, um, the Rabbanit Voralea, he, she came to him and said that she understands that there is a kitrug, a, um, a judgment against him in Shemaim, and he needs to pass away, he needs to leave this world, and she's willing to take the judgment upon her, and she really passed away. And um, But before she did, the Alter Rebbe answered her and said, no, 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 don't worry, I can handle leadership of this generation, or in general, leadership of Hasidim, in general, even from Shammai. So again, this story proves to us that this is not, we cannot say that the al Rebbe went up to Shammai and basically forgot about us, but the opposite, being the leader and connected, uh, the al Rebbe stayed connected even though he went up. So that's a side proof that Rabbi Ginsburg goes into. But um, we're still going into the argument um, and trying to understand something that's connected to our generation from this argument. Again, we could say that um, that, that generation of the Rebbe Rayats, a generation that was a um, hundred years ago, that's, um, you know, that's a different situation because people really didn't have what they eat. And, you know, there was wars and, 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 and tremendous amount of troubles some things that we can't even uh, think of. And this is before the Holocaust um, even uh, was the beginning of uh, the revolution in Russia. And a lot of things happened uh, during those generations. Um, so you can understand that there was a, a physical bad situation. But uh, what Rabbi Ginsburg goes into is explaining that it's not, it's not only that generation that became, that, that had a hard time. It's every generation, things change. So, um, so the proof to that, the, the overlook of that is the change between the Baal Shem Tov time, before the Baal Shem Tov time and afterwards. What was the big change? So in Tanya, uh, the first Rebbe of Chabad's main book, and again, I know uh, Baruch Hashem with this platform, you can have people that are very connected learning and you can have people that are, um, I'm not as connected to um, every um, um, term that we're saying, so it's okay. We're going to try to explain some, and obviously we'll miss some. But um, in the in the in the Tanya, he explains that um, that from the generation of uh, the Baal Shem Tov, the work of uh, having um, of breaking the body, of having fast days and, and, um, and um, taking away things that the body needs 
is it has passed on. And in our generation, we have a lot more um, work to do with the body. So um, if in the old generation, um, let's say um, um, a person wanted to, to become uplifted, he wanted to be, um, he wanted to be connected to Hashem, he would basically eat very little, he would sleep very little, he would, um, he would um, sometimes even go into the snow and, 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 and just roll in it just to be, to have his body cold and just disconnect from the body. And, and that's the way they did it. It's a very manly thing to do, to, to, to disconnect from your feelings, emotions, desires, everything that has to do with you, with your body, and just go up to Shemaim and just think very spiritually. Up to today, you can see in India and many places that try to be spiritual, um, that they disconnect from the body. So that was the old way of, uh, of connecting. You connect to God by disconnecting from the body. But since the Baal Shem Tov came um, and changed the way things are, um, are uh, done in the Jewish, um, in the Jewish world, um, and in the world in general, um, the, the, the way we work with the body is just like the Pasuk in, in Torah explains, you work with, the, when, when the donkey falls, you're helping the donkey, um, you're helping the person um, that the, his donkey fell and just lifting up the donkey in order to lift your, um, your, uh, your baggage. So again, I'll, I'll explain it a little bit. There's a mitzvah in Torah that if you see someone that he has his, his whole package on his donkey and the donkey fell, you, you have a mitzvah, a special mitzvah to help him pick up the donkey and pick up the package and help him get up. So this mitzvah, the Baal Shem Tov connected and, uh, and explained in Tanya that we're connecting it to the body, that we're lifting up the body and together with the body, we're going to, um, we're going to work and connect to Hashem. So explaining again in short, we have before the Baal Shem Tov time, that things were um, uh, by breaking the body, you were able to connect to Hashem. And after the Baal Shem Tov time, there's no need for that. What, um, and, and the kind of work that it is, is more manly type of work. And again, when we speak about, uh, um, in, in general, in Kabbalah, when we speak about a, a man and women, about uh, the feminine side and the male side of things, um, it's not just in the simple a way we look at it right now, it's, it's, it's a whole way of looking at things. So the way we look at things in the way is the way, you know, is a, is a manly way versus a feminine way of looking at things. So again, in this generation, um, as we go down from the Baal Shem Tov, every generation becomes more feminine, more connected to the body. And it has a quote unquote bad side to it that you can't just disconnect and connect to God without this world. But it also has a very special side that we learn from the Pasuk Eshet Chayil Ateret Bala, that a woman becomes the, the crown of the man, because at the end of the day, if I can explain it in my words, I'm going to disconnect from the text for a minute and just explain it completely in my words. At the end of the day, we, God wants this world. He wants us to work with this body, with this um, world that he has created. So disconnecting from it, as much as you're able to connect to him more, you're not connecting to the plan. You're disconnecting from the plan. So if you want to connect to God's plan, at the end of the day, you need to, the opposite. You need to raise the body. You need to work with the body. You can't just not eat and not drink because that, that was not why this world was created. So in order to, um, to connect and raise what, what's in this world, you have to be more caring to what this world is about. So um, um, if we want to prove this, and with this we'll end this section and kind of try to connect it a little bit more to our generation. If we want to prove this, we have a special yom yom about the story about the Tzemach Tzedek, the third Rebbe of Chabad. And he, um, uh, the Rebbe Sen Rivka, um, his... Uh, his color, she came to him with, uh, with, well, she didn't come to him. He went to her hearing 
that um, she was uh, uh, she needed to eat and she was davening and she wasn't davening quickly, I would assume, and then eating. And he said to her very clearly that you need it's better to you need to eat before you daven, and it's better to eat and then pray. And this way, your food is preparation for praying. This way, uh, I'm saying in my words, you're lifting your eating in order so you can pray, rather than praying with the mindset of I'm going to eat soon and take care of my body as well. So it's better to be uh, uh, having the food as preparation for praying versus the prepar- the uh, the the praying as preparation for food. So you can see, and this is the third rabbi, you can see how every generation, it's going down even more to care about the body. Now, after we explain all this, uh, we want to explain how it is in our generation. What does it mean that a person needs to eat well in our generation and sleep well in our generation? How, how does it connect to us? And the... Um, the connection is um, that um, uh, I'm, I'm debating if to go into it. The Rabbi Ginsburg explains a little bit more proof of why it's so important to be connected. That um, the, the the famous word of the Rebbe Rayatz that um, that Amalek. What is Amalek? It's the disconnect between what you're thinking and or the Hasidus that you're learning and the emotions, the the regesh alev, the emotions of the heart. The, the disconnect is a malik. So it's not that we can say, okay, you can, you can just do what you need to do and just be, um, just wear your fill and do your Shabbos and just do it in a regular way. You must connect your feelings. Otherwise you're, you're not, uh, you're not killing a malik. You're not, uh, you're not doing a mitzvah. So you can see that the Rebbe Rayatz did want very clearly um, that we uh, that we have ahava, love of God, and yira, and uh, sensitivity to God in everything that we do. So if that's the case, what's the story again? How do we explain the story? So we'll say the story again. Just uh, the story is that the Rebbe Rayatz saw in a vision that the argument that he had with the first Rebbe of Chabad, and the argument is, do you need love? Can you require love and sensitivity to God in this generation? And um, and the question is, if he says that you need it in a way that if you don't have it, it's a malik, it's a sin. How can you say um, that you don't need that you don't require it? And the answer is really looking at it from his perspective. So Rabbi Ginsburg looks at it and says, you know, we're, we have to see who, who, who and how the Rebbe Rayatz was, was at that time. And at that time, he had um, um, there's a, a famous story that he had an argument with his father if, he's, um, if, he, can, if he can be a Rebbe, if he has what to give the chassidim, um, if he can be the leader, which he was um, of the generation. The Rebbe Ayat's leadership was something unbelievable. Um, the amount of Mesiris Nefesh, of uh, devotion, of being a soldier that was developed in the, by the Rebbe Ayats in his generation is unbelievable. There's a famous story um, that they ask uh, uh, um, Chaim uh, if, um, wh- why does he listen to the Rebbe Ayats? And he says, because when he puts his hand in his pocket, he takes out Mesir Nefesh. He takes out um, completely de- complete devotion. So um, that is something that the Rebbe Hayat's leadership was amazing to that generation. But he felt, when he looked at it from his perspective, he felt like, can I give enough to my generation to be uplifted? Meaning, when you're looking at the first Rebbe, the, the Alter Rebbe, you can say that someone should have love of God and, and sensitivity of God because the leader of that generation, the Alter Rebbe, was something special. But the Rebbe Rayat was thinking to himself, how can I say that about myself? And Rebbe Ginsburg explains, what are these, what is the spiritual side of food and, and, and a bed and a mattress and blanket? The spiritual side 
is um, um, food is 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 divrei Torah is, is chidushi Torah is, is new Torah is new teachings that is connected to the generation. That's literally the food that we eat. What is the food that a person spiritually needs in order to have love of God and, and sensitivity to God? He needs to have Torah that speaks to him. And Rabbi Ginsburg explains that in the old generation that we spoke about before, that disconnected from the body, they didn't need, quote unquote, food. They didn't need the, the Torah to connect to them. They learned God's Torah. And if it has nothing to do with me, that's fine. But when, um, when we come down to the Baal Shem Tov, which again is a lower level that I need the Torah to connect to me, that's very um, egotistic. It's very um, non-spiritual, uh, meaning something spiritual should be something not connected. And now that we're saying that you need the food that we need in these generations, as we go down from the Baal Shem Tov towards our generation, the food that we need is for the Torah to be connected to us, that's, that's downgrading us, meaning it's, it's, um, there's two things to it. There is obviously um, understanding, but there's also a lot of shiflus, a lot of uh, um, downgrading of ourselves, uh, humbleness, you can call it. It's not exact translation um, that um, you need to have in order to um, connect um, properly. Um, Rabbi Ginsburg goes on to explain that um, if we would connect in the old ways, um, meaning if someone had real love of God, if someone had, that they had in the old generation, someone's able to completely disconnect from his body, disconnect from his, um, from his needs and connect to God, he would be very um, full of himself. He would, he would feel like <laughs> this generation does not deserve someone like him, so spiritual, so connected to God. And once you feel that way, your whole, you're not connected. You're, you're just not connected. You're fooling yourself because your, your ego, your gaiva um, is not allowing you to connect. So you, you work very, very hard, but you're not connecting. So you, when we go down to this generation, um, and again, when we're saying this generation, you can look at it as the generation of the Rebbe Rayatz, the previous rabbi of Chabad, which the Yorat side is this uh, Shabbat, um, huge Shabbat, or you can go down to our generation. Um, and in general, in order to connect, you need two things. This is this is the 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 new sense of the generation is you need food, and food in the spiritual sense is that you need the Torah to be connected to you, to, to this generation, to the relevance of this generation. You can't just learn um, a Gemara just the same way they learned 2,000 years ago and expect to be to have love and, and sensitivity to God, to have Ahava and Yira. You cannot have that. And, and the other thing that you need, and this is very interesting, what is a, what is a, a mattress? What is a, a good night's sleep? A good night's sleep is, is stories, is Hasidic stories, is stories about Sadiqim, stories about Sadiqim of the previous generation that uh, Rabbi Rayatz told many of, and stories of Sadiqim in, um, in our generations. But um, you need those two things. Um, on the one hand, um, Torah that's connected, that's, that's really Hasidut from the time of the Baal Shem Tov all the way down to us, Torah that's well connected. And on the other hand, you need um, uh, to have uh, good humbleness by having good stories, um, current stories that are alive, that you feel alive when you read them. And, and when you have them, you're able to, uh, you're able to connect. So um, what the Rebbe Rayat was arguing, he was saying, do I have the ability to give this generation um, the, the, the Torah, which is the food that they need and the stories that they need? And it's, it, uh, it seems that what the Alter Rebbe answered him is you do. Um, Alter Rebbe knowing everything from above and obviously generation after generation um, connecting to the leader of that generation, which the Rebbe Rayatz was definitely um, the uh, most amazing leader that you can think of that connected to that generation 
with the whole messi with nefesh and the words and the and tremendous amount of of uh of troubles that that generation had and um and that's what they needed um and an amazing amount of stories that the rebbeiat told that's connected and that connected that generation um when we speak about end a little bit uh, ending this um this uh this uh, study that uh, Rabbi Ginsburg had for the Rebbe uh, Rayat um we speak about a little bit of the uh current generation we know that the uh, that the Rebbe also at the uh at the end of uh, of uh, his uh speakings um he started saying um very short words that had um a lot of uh gematriot which is uh, n- uh putting numbers to to uh things and 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 matching them and a lot of different um uh vote that connects uh torah to certain things in life and by doing that you're able to also connect and um and to end and and explain a little bit more what what does it mean and what is connecting what is love of god and sensitivity to god that we have in this generation and the answer to that is when you're learning about torah when you're seeing uh counting some numbers in torah when you're connecting things of torah to you and you're on the one hand being blown away and anyone that learns rabbi ginsburg's uh uh things uh, especially if you learn them on a regular basis and are able to connect to them and understand the deeper and inner meanings and the wonders and the real wonders that come from from live torah and you're able to connect it to your day-to-day life then that that feeling of connection is a hava is love and that connects you and you can see it simply if you want someone to connect you need him to you need him to to feel connected to feel love and love is connection um on the other hand sensitivity grows from a lot of uh humbleness of shiflus of understanding um that our level is so low compared to the higher levels of the generations before us and the tzaddikim uh, even the tzaddikim in our generation and definitely um uh when looking at um the whole jewish history and looking at our generation it's a very we're 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 at the lowest possible place and having those two feelings together on the other hand strong connect, uh, connectivity uh, and humbleness by by understanding just a simple understanding of how low our generation is that allows you to to be lifted up um and that lift up that that you have is really connected to the same ahava and yira that someone had 200 years ago when they fasted the you know several days and 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 broke their body completely um rabbi ginsburg said uh, uh, um explains that there was a letter that the rebbe sent him saying not to not to um lock things not to nail things down um we know that uh, um one of the main things we we don't want to do in judaism and in general is to nail things down we know that other um other religions try to worship uh things that are nailed down but we're not we're not nailed down to anything we're flexible and by being flexible we're able to have love of god and sensitivity to god in this generation that's connected to this generation and not trying to um to copy paste the way they were 100 years ago and 1000 years ago this generation has changed just like every generation changes and you cannot nail the torah you cannot nail the feeling of ahava and yira of love and sensitivity you can't nail them down and that's very important if you nail them down it becomes dead and something dead is not is there's no love in in in, in there's no love there's no there's nothing that comes out of something dead so in order to be alive you need to be dynamic and um and that and that allows you to connect to this generation so that's um in general what um this is about let me see if there's anything else that we want to go into um 
we we can say a little bit more about the 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 Torah when you when you learn Hasidus well, you can look at it like, just like uh, energy bars. Again, you can see how connected Rabbi Ginsburg is to this generation. A, a lot of times we want fast food. Fast food, not just in the junk food, but fast food, something that you can eat quickly that gives you a lot of energy. Many times we like to take pills this generation with vitamins and and just trying to catch up very quickly on things that we lose in order to get the body better. So we eat um, energy food. Um, the same thing with, with Hasidus. You, you now have Torah that you can learn uh, a statement, a sentence, something in Torah, even a, 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 a numerizing like numbers, something in Torah and have it just like energy food and have that connect you very quickly to Ahava, to Yira, to, to, to God. And that is something that, um, that this generation is blessed uh, that, you know, 200 years ago, someone needed to work very, very hard in order to connect. But now we can take some uh, uh, very uh, simple stories or Divrei Torah and just have them just like an energy bar, just quickly connect us to God and have the right Ahava, the right love of God and the right uh, connection. Okay. Um, I'm not sure who everybody is, um, but if anyone has any questions about what we learned or in general, um, you can either um, um, ask now. I'm pretty sure you can unmute. Um, if not, you can email me. We can try to talk more. And hopefully these study groups, I'm hoping that Bezat Hashem, they will be for, we said again, Refua Shalema to the people that we mentioned in the beginning. But also, they would be um, helping us to to learn more and, and learn more wonders and have more energy bars from uh, uh, the Divrei Torah that Rabbi Ginsburg puts out every every week, um, and we'll be able to do more connection and relevance to the Torah that we learn and um, and our day to day life. So. Um, I'm saying from now because Wednesday is the day that we're starting to think of the next Shabbat. You can do the week as Saturday through, um, um, as basically Sunday through Saturday, which is a week, or you can have the week where, sh and that's when Shabbat is at the end. You can have Shabbat in the middle of the week, and then it's Wednesday through Tuesday. So today, Wednesday, is being the, the first day that we're, um, that we're connecting to Shabbat of Parashat Bo, of Yetziat Mitzrayim, of uh, a very special um, Shabbat. And we can do that by learning. And again, I urge everyone to learn the whole 40 pages of this beautiful uh, Niflaut Wonders for Parashat Bo. Thank you.